Hello. Today I wanted to record a brief lecture on Sarah Vowell's Shooting Dad. Now I'm not going to go through the whole essay because it is rather long, but I wanted to point out just a couple of really interesting transitions that she makes. So the first one, if we go down, um, you know the essay starts uh, talking about her and her father and their different views on politics, um, especially the issue of firearms. So if we go down a little bit, it's still talking about her and her father, um, but she transitions from this really interesting introduction into the actual act of shooting a firearm, which transitions very nicely into the end of the essay, kind of connecting all three parts. Um, and I want to point out where this happens at. So in this paragraph here, we see that the house is partitioned off into territories. Right, so the kitchen and living room were within the DMZ, the demilitarized zone, so both her and her father worked there together. But then we have all this description of her dad's shop, right, and an obvious transition is into her shop. Um, so we're talking about her room right here, and it's really interesting to me that she mentions that there's a framed portrait of the French composer Claude Debussy nailed to the wall, right? So I just want to highlight that. Um, so this is a really interesting detail. We know she's She's involved with music based on other things in the essay, but it's a very specific uh, little mention of this um, composer, right? And if we go into our next paragraph, um, she's trying to go from bedroom to dating, which is um, a totally different kind of subject, right? Um, so how does she link the two together? So she says, it has been my experience that in order to impress potential suitors, one should skip the teen Debussy anecdotes and stick with the always attention getting line my dad makes guns so here you see this just really nice um, transition right just by mentioning the same person's name uh, she probably didn't try and impress boys with Debussy anecdotes right or ward off their inevitable breakups with it um, instead she just adds that little detail and she creates this bridge between the paragraphs there's one other really interesting um, notion that happens here. I already highlighted it so I could find it for you. Uh, but it's this sentence way down toward the bottom uh, right here. So the cannon was so loud and so painful I had to touch my head to make sure that my skull hadn't cracked open. One thing that my dad and I share is that we're both a little hard of hearing. Me from Aerosmith, him from Gunsmith. Now Aerosmith might very well be Val's favorite band of all time. Um, but instead of Arrow, or, or, I'm sorry, but even if Aerosmith is not her favorite band of all time, it's what gets selected here, right? It could have been Styx, it could have been Def Leppard. Um, I had to chuckle a little bit about that. Uh, it could have been really anyone. Um, maybe even Guns N' Roses wouldn't have been a bad choice, but Aerosmith is the best choice because you get that Smith, right? Aerosmith, Gunsmith, there's this uh, poetic nature to the language there. So even though this is a true story, even though this is nonfiction, we have these figurative language elements to help string things all nicely together. Um, and I especially am interested in the way these words sound, right? Aerosmith to Gunsmith, because this essay was first performed for the radio. Um, it was a radio piece before it was put into writing. Um, so it's very interested in sound, and of course that, that very... Um, touching and kind of beautiful last line I want it to hurt about um, when she shoots her dad's ashes into a mountainside one day. Um, that's the sound she wants it to hurt, right? She doesn't want to plug her ears. Um, I will not cover my ears, as she says right here. Um, so again, we have all this connection to sound. So whether it be composers or uh, rock artists or whatever it might be, it's all very intentionally done. And this is all stuff that's done at the workshop or the workbench, so to speak. There's a famous line that says, with poetry or with, with writing, the first line comes from the heavens. Everything else is from the workbench. Uh, so as you're revising your final research paper, try and make it poetic. Try and incorporate that figurative language. Try and make the transitions make sense. It's very minute details, uh, but it's what gets your essay published in a book full of the greatest essays of all time. Um, it's what takes it to that next level. So I encourage you to look for ways to do that and use who you've been reading as an example. Hope this helped, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.